Aloha, this is Dr. Stanley Kim in Hawaii. Currently, I'm working at Wilcox Medical Center in Kauai Island in Hawaii. Today, we will discuss endometrial cancer. Many people think the ovarian cancer is the uh, most common gynecological cancer in the U.S., but actually the endometrial cancer is more common than the ovarian cancer. Mostly, uh, early stages can be cured with a surgery or uh, with the radiation therapy. Even with the advanced stage, with the, all the newly developed uh, drugs and then uh, targeted therapy, immunotherapy, the uh, prognosis has been much uh, improved. Let's discuss more in detail. Thank you for watching. Endometrial cancer is the most common gynecological cancer in the U.S., occurring in 1 to 2 percent of women, mostly uh, in elderly patients, like a 60 to 70 years ages. But occasionally we see a younger patients under age 50. Then we suspect patients may have uh, underlying family cancer genes. Please look at these drawings. The uterus is in between the uh, bladder and the uh, intestine, colon and the rectum. And this uterus has an inner lining called the endometrium and uh, also a thick muscular layer called the myometrium. So the cancer develops from this inner li lining called endometrium. It may be preceded by precancerous lesions such as atypical endometrial hypoplasia or intraepithelial neoplasm. Endometrial cancer have many different histologic types, and the most common type is endometrioid carcinoma. Other types, such as serous carcinoma, clear cell carcinoma, mixed, undifferentiated, or carcinosarcoma are less common and uh, are more aggressive. We also grade the endometrial cancer into grade one to three, depending on the aggressiveness. The lower the grades, the better the prognosis. It can be classified to type one and type two by clinical and pathological characteristics. Type one is the most commonly seen. It's a lower grade, grade one or two endometrioid carcinoma. It has a better prognosis. Usually it's uh, caused by estrogen stimulation. So the risk factors include estrogen. Tamoxifen, it's a kind of a anti-estrogen, but it also has have an estrogen uh, uh, property, so it can cause endometrioid carcinoma. And early menarche or late menopause, nulliparity, polycystic ovary, obesity, diabetes mellitus, or family cancer genes such as Lynch syndrome or Coden syndrome. Or a contraceptives reduce the risk of endometrial cancer. Type 2 is a higher grade, grade 3 endometrial carcinoma or other types such as serous or clear cell carcinoma. Clinically, we also classified into low, intermediate, and the high risk endometrial cancer by risk stratification and to determine the prognosis and the adjuvant treatment after the surgery. We suspect the endometrial cancer when patients have uterine bleeding. Most common symptom is painless uh, uterine bleeding, especially when the patients are taking estrogen or had a history of estrogen therapy or tamoxifen therapy, you need to uh, suspect the endometrial cancer. Or sometimes you can uh, uh, discover by abnormal pap smear or instantly found in CT scan, ultrasound or MRI scan. The most important diagnostic test is a transvaginal ultrasound. Let's look at this picture. The lady is undergoing a transvaginal ultrasound examination. This ultrasound will show the endometrial thickness. If it's over 20 millimeter, then you, you suspect the endometrial cancer. But if it's less than five millimeter, it's really low risk. 
But when you do this ultrasound in the premenopausal woman who have actively uh, active estrogen uh, uh, production and uh, period, then there is no relationship with the uh, thickness and the endometrial cancer. Another interesting uh, ultrasound is hydro ultrasound or saline infusion sonography. You actually infuse the uh, water, saline water into the uh, uterus and uh, it will show some more uh, uh, clear pictures, but it's a more painful. When the ultrasound suspect the endometrial cancer, the next step is endometrial tissue biopsy. There are several different types. Most commonly, blind endometrial biopsy is done at the office. It's about 90% accurate. As you, as you see in this picture, the doctor introduced small catheter into the endometrial cavity. The, this catheter has a tiny holes in the tip, and it's connected to the uh, suction, so that some tissues and cells are aspirated, suctioned. Recently, uh, uh, some doctors use this endometrial brushings, and it's quite effective and uh, less uh, uncomfortable. When these techniques couldn't get the enough sample or make a diagnosis, then next step is to do the dilatation and the curatage. It's called DNC. It can be done with or without hysteroscopy. Then this uh, cure, they use this curates. It's pretty, uh, uh, a little bit bigger than this ether and it has a kind of a ring so to scrap the uh, endometrial issues. It's usually done at the hospital under sedation or anesthesia. And the, some specialists can do the hysteroscopy and biopsy uh, at the office. Now, you make a diagnosis of endometrial cancer by biopsy, then we have to find out how far it is uh, spread or just confined in the uterus. We do the uh, evaluation before surgery, uh, HNP, and also have to ask family history because some patients, especially young patients, have a, a underlying family cancer genes like a Lynch syndrome and the chest x-ray to check their lung and the CT scan of abdomen and pelvis, especially for type 2 or high-grade endometrial cancer. But we don't have to do this CAT scan routinely for early type 1 tumor or low-risk groups. If you suspect that uh, cancer spread, I mean, invade a little bit deeper, then MRI scan is better for detecting myometrial invasion, cervical or lymph node involvement. CA1 to 5 is elevated, it's only about half of the endometrial cancer patients. So it's not reliable for screening. However, it can be useful because abnormally high CA1 to 5 at the time of the presentation indicates extra uterine spread or metastasis. The mainstay of endometrial cancer treatment is a surgery. It is total hysterectomy bilateral salpingo wolfractomy and the lymph node evaluation. In other, in other words, you remove the uterus along with the uh, tubes and the ovaries and also check the lymph nodes uh, in the pelvis or even retroperitoneum to see how far the cancer has spread or not spread. Mostly uh, laparoscopic or robotic surgery is done, but sometimes doctors have to do open laparotomy when the intra abdominal adhesions uh, uh, prohibits those laparoscopic or robotic surgery or uh, uterine size is very big to take it out by this laparoscopy. Vaginal hysterectomy can be done, but you cannot assess the peritoneal or retroperitoneal cavity. So it's not a standard th surgery for the endometrial cancer. Type of lymph node evaluation is somewhat controversial. We, uh, the doctors used to do complete pelvic and retroperitoneal lymph node dissection, especially uh, aortic periaortic lymph node sampling, except for early or low risk patients. But it can cause lymphedema and doesn't provide the survival benefits. So the now uh, the sentinel lymph node uh, sampling or biopsy uh, is under active research and it, this is very promising but it lacks randomized study uh, 
to be a standard uh, lymph node evaluation method yet. So some doctors prefer selective lymphadenectomy. They just pick up those lymph nodes only for high-risk patients. Also, uh, pelvic washing, you just wash the pelvis to see there are some cancer cells spilled over in, inside the abdomen. But it doesn't it's not used for surgical st staging. However, positive uh, pelvic washing cytology is a poor prognosis sign for stage one or two endometrial cancer. Of course, that means cancer cells spilled over into the uh, peritoneal cavity. And that those patients need to have an adjuvant chemotherapy. After surgery, we can uh, accurately stage the endometrial cancer. We stage into stage one, two, three, four. Stage one has A and B. In stage A, the cancer confined within endometrium, or even if invades deeply into the muscles, but uh, less than half of myometrium. Stage 1b means the cancer invade more than half of myometrium. Stage 2 means the cancer involved the uh, uh, cervix down below. Stage 3 has a stage 3a, b, and the c. Stage 3a means the cancer involves the uh, ovary or tube. Stage 3b uh, cancer inv involve the uh, uh, vagina. Stage C, 3C means cancer spread to the lymph glands. It has subdivided to stage 3, 1, uh, stage C1, stage C2, depending on the location. Stage C1 means the cancer spread to the pelvic lymph nodes only. In the stage C2, the cancer spread beyond the pelvic lymph node to the uh, uh, retroperitoneum, such as periaortic lymph nodes. As was mentioned in introduction, endometrial cancer can be graded in grade one, two, three. In grade one, cancer cells are well differentiated, grade two moderately, and three poorly differentiated. Grade X means grade cannot be assessed. Also, lymphovascular invasion is important uh, to determine the uh, prognosis. Lymphovascular invasion zero means no lymphovascular invasion. Lymphovascular invasion one, two, three, four, depending on the uh, uh, extent. Lymphovascular invasion nine means unknown or indeterminate. Clinically, we uh, classify the uh, endometrial cancer into low risk, intermediate risk, and the high risk uh, endometrial cancer by risk stratification and uh, to determine the treatments. In low-risk endometrial cancer, the endometrial cancer has a histology grade one or two, and it shouldn't be a clear or a serous or a carcinosarcoma cell type. Cancer limited to the endometrium or invading less than half of myometrium, in other words, T1A, and the no lymphovascular invasion. So in this low-risk patients, uh, surgery alone should be enough without any further uh, radiation or chemotherapy. In intermediate risk, the endometrial cancer has a grade one or two and the limited to the endometrium or invading less than half of myometrium and lymphovascular invasion. So it's the same as low risk, but if the cancer has the uh, uh, lymphovascular in invasion, then it belongs to intermediate risk. Or the cancer invade more than half of myometrium, stage 1b, or invading uh, occult uh, cervical stroma, stage 2, or grade 3 uh, invading less than half of myometrium. This intermediate risk uh, is subclassified into low intermediate risk and the high intermediate risk. The high intermediate uh, intermediate risk patients are usually aged over 60 to 70. Well, it's depending on the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, experts. Some people use the uh, age over 60 belong to a 
high intermediate risk group. Or grade three cancer, and the cancer invade more than half myometrium. And they are uh, high intermediate risk, and they are treated with the adjuvant radiotherapy, usually uh, vaginal brachytherapy over the pelvic, whole pelvic lymph node radiation, uh, pelvic radiation, because pelvic radiation has a higher toxicity, uh, especially into the intestine. But uh, uh, low intermediate risk patients uh, do not need to have any adjuvant chemotherapy or radiation therapy or more surgery. High risk patients are different. Those are patients, the cancer grossly involved the cervix or stage three or four, or cancer cells are clear cell or serous carcinoma, regardless of the stages. The patients need to have an adjuvant chemotherapy and the radiation therapy with a vaginal brachytherapy or pelvic radiotherapy, depending on the extent of disease. But stage 1A clear cell serous carcinoma or uh, clear cell carcinoma do not need to have uh, the uh, adjuvant therapy. We know the mainstay of uh, treatment of endometrial cancer is surgery, but what about the young patients who want to have uh, a child? Uh, in that case, you take chance. And instead of surgery, progestin hormone therapy uh, is used, and it achieved complete remission in 60 to 90% of patients. But the high-risk patients cannot have this hormone therapy. Only for grade one endometrial carcinoma, and the tumor confined to the endometrium only. Unfortunately, sometimes cancer uh, recurs after the surgery or adjuvant therapy. Then how we treat those locally recurrent cancer? The mainstay of therapy for in this case is pelvic exenteration. Pelvic exenteration means you remove whole uh, pelvic organs, including bladder, uterus, vagina, and the uh, uh, sigmoid colon and the rectum. This aggressive therapy can cure uh, locally recurrent cancer, but this is a real big extensive surgery. So if possible, we give radiation therapy first. Hopefully radiation therapy uh, cure this disease. If patients cannot have this surgery or radiation, then uh, medical therapy as same as the uh, as for metastatic cancer would be given. When the metastatic disease is suspected, we evaluate patients with the HNP in the lab test, including CA1 to 5, and the CT scan of the chest, abdomen, pelvis, or MRI and or PET CT to uh, assess the extent and the locations. And the biopsy of metastatic lesion is recommended to confirm the diagnosis and the test for the genomic molecular test, including uh, ERPR hormone receptors, HER2, microcellular instability, and the tumor mutation burden, and the gen uh, genomic analysis for biomarker targets. Always uh, we evaluate patients for a feasibility of cytoreduction surgery, like a ovarian cancer. When the patients could have uh, cytoreduction surgery, then uh, adjuvant chemotherapy is uh, given. If it's not just upfront chemotherapy, using carboplatin and the paclitaxel with or without bevacizumab. You know, this bevacizumab can't be, cannot be used when patients obstruction or hemorrhage or brain metastasis, especially hemorrhagic uh, metastasis. If the metastasis developed uh, over six months after the last platinum therapy, it's considered as a platinum sensitive, or it developed uh, less uh, within six months, then it's a platinum resistant. Then the treatment choice is pembrolizumab with a levanitib, uh, Lenvima. I had experience using this combination of uh, pembrolizumab IV infusion with the oral uh, Lenvima is quite uh, impressive. It is given, it can be used regardless of the uh, PDL1 uh, uh, scores. So if it's PDL1 negative, still it's effective. 
hormone therapy with the medgestrol and the tamoxifen sequentially or alternately every three weeks uh, can be used when the disease is not very aggressive or uh, very, very extens extensive. But aromatase inhibitors are generally not effective. And of course, when the patients have HER2 positive, then trastuzumab, Herceptin, uh, with chemotherapy is recommended. Even in difficult situations, in God, we never lose hope. Thank you for watching.